Hello and welcome to the first video of the How Much I Made series where I share everything about the farming strategy that I've tested including how much actual currency I got added to my bank after selling the loot. As the series is not called how much I would be making, the goal is to also go through how I liquidate the loot from the farm and show the actual profit in Divines and Chaos instead of just calculating the value in Wealthy Exile. If you enjoy content like this, you can let me know by liking the video and subscribing to the channel, and I will be sure to make more similar content in the future. Today, we are going to be discussing about farming scarabs through strong boxes in T16 maps. The strategy centers around the All Flame Embers of Syndicate, which converts mobs in our map into monsters that can drop scarabs. And secondly, the Ambush Scarab of Containment, which turns all the mobs in our map into many strong boxes. Why this is good is that through our Atlas Passive Tree and the Ambush Scarab of Hidden Compartments, we have a 25% chance of being able to reopen strong boxes again. That means we have a very good chance of spawning those monsters that can drop scarabs multiple times when we reopen the strong boxes. Besides scarabs, this strategy will also generate a lot of currency items, divination cards, and T16 and T17 maps because of this cluster in the Atlas Passive Tree and the Ambush Scarab of Discernment. This makes it so that strong boxes that drop currency, divination cards, and maps appear more often in our map and items dropped from those strong boxes will always be duplicated. Before we get into the full details of the strategy, I want to give a quick disclaimer that you will need a decently strong build to run this strategy. This is because we will be using 8 mods maps and increased map modifiers effects and the strong box effects themselves are quite dangerous too. If you are looking for a budget build that can run this strategy comfortably, I will link the guide to my current Ice Nova of Frostbots build in the description. The strategy also requires a lot of upfront investment, so if you do not have a lot of currency on hand, I also have a low investment farming strategies video that you can follow. There are a few variations of Atlas Passive Tree that we can go with for this strategy. I started off with specking into Nico and Blue Elters. On paper, this sounds really good because Nico can sometimes spawn additional strong boxes when we click on a sulfide vein and the blue altars can give us more item quantity and scare up duplication which is huge for this strategy. But I found that Nico requires too much points investment and is eating into the points that we could have spent on additional scare up nodes. And the blue altars are really inconsistent and don't really provide much most of the time. And without the increased chance of better scare ups, the scare up drop was quite mediocre. So I ended up removing Nico and blue altars and instead went with Domination for extra shrines in the map as well as putting more points into chance of getting more expensive scarabs. Shrines are good for this strategy because they are always surrounded by large packs of mobs, including the mobs that can drop scarabs. The remaining part of the Atlas Passive Tree are map drop nodes that increase our chance of getting T16 and T17 maps and Devoted Modifier's chance and effect increase. Devoted Modifier's are extremely lucrative for this farming strategy because we spawn an enormous amount of mobs in our maps. We will be swimming in raw currencies whenever we get a good devoted modifier like the Chaos or Divine Ops ones. For Scarabs, we are running Ambush Scarab of Containment, Discernment, Hidden Compartments and a basic Ambush Scarab to spawn more strong boxes. We are also adding Ambush on the map device. Jungle Valley is the map of choice for this strategy because it drops good divination cards and altars in the map do not give useless modifiers that affect the boss. For maximum profit, we will be buying 8 mods map on the TFT Discord. And in case you are unfamiliar with how to do that, I will walk you through the process. As preparation, we need to first set up a regex, which is basically a string of tags that will filter out maps with modifiers that we cannot run when we paste it into the stash tabs search bar. To do that, simply go to poe.re, map mods, select all the mods that you cannot run without going over the character's limit, and copy the tags at the top. We then go to the bulk 8 mod maps want to sell channel on TFD Discord and look for any seller that is selling Jungle Valley maps. I find it most efficient to message the seller on Discord with your regex, in game name, amount that you want to buy, and the total price. Then, wait for them to contact you in-game. To maximize efficiency, we'll also load up on some All Flame Ember of Syndicate first. There are four variations and all of them do the same thing. 
so just buy whichever that is the cheapest on the market. On the trade website, you can select all four of them and try group by seller to minimize the amount of trade that you have to make. If you cannot find any good deal that way, simply undo the group by seller option and just set a minimum stock level instead. Generally, you'll be using one or two of these all flame embers per map, so just plan accordingly on how many to buy. Occasionally, we will also need all flame ember of anarchy and rats or frogs whenever we get a chaos or divine devoted modifier. But this does not happen very often, so if you already have two or three of these in your stash, that should be good enough. Finally, for the map influence, we are choosing the Eater of Worlds. I will link the full setup of the strategy in the description for your easy reference. And here is the breakdown of how much everything costs for the 40 maps that I've run. And the average cost per map ended up being 1.2 divine. The first thing we need to discuss about running the maps is how to use the all flames. At the lantern of Arimov screen, we first need to check if we have gotten any divine or chaos devoted modifiers. If yes, on the mobs with the highest pack density, we will be using an all flame ember of anarchy if it is a strongest monster in the pack conversion, an all flame ember of rats or frogs if it is a chance to drop additional. Otherwise, we'll be converting mobs with highest pack density into syndicate mobs by using any of the all flame ember of syndicate. If they are also mobs with normal pack density but has this increased pack size indicated by the plus sign next to them, these are worth converting to syndicate mobs too. If none of these are present, just use one all flame ember of syndicate on any of the normal pack density mob. Once we are in the map, we'll be clearing the strong boxes and clicking on the blue altars when they show up. For the blue altar, the good modifiers that you want to prioritize are quantity and rarity increase, scare up duplication, and currency divination card drop. If you also happen to have a chaos or divine devotion, you will want to prioritize currency duplication instead. When opening the strong boxes, make sure that you stay away after you have clicked on them. This is because some strong boxes have the detonate nearby corpses modifier, which will kill most of the build if you stand in the blast zone. Other than that, the ice novas and explosions from the strong boxes can hurt quite a bit too. If you have a caster character like me, in your passive skill tree you can spec into a caster mastery and grab 25% chance to open nearby chests when casting a spell. This is a fantastic skill for farming strong boxes because you can open multiple of them at a time without clicking while maintaining a safe distance. Also, I find that looting after clearing the map is much more efficient than looting on the go, so I would recommend that you do that as well. Because there are a lot of strong boxes to clear and tons of loot to collect afterwards, it took me anywhere between 6 to 10 minutes to finish a map just in case you need a reference. As we will be picking up tons of loot from this strategy, to process and liquidate them can be quite a challenge. To save you some headache, I will be working you through how I liquidate more than 90% of the loot that I have collected over the 40 maps. Our first order of business is to identify the most expensive items in the pile. We can do that very easily by using Wealthy Exile. After logging in with your POE account, click here to select which tabs that you would like to track and you are all set. By default, the items with the highest total value will appear at the top of the list, so we will be focusing on selling those items first. Next, we will be going through all of our definition cards and convert anything that we have a full stack of. This should generate a very significant amount of extra raw currencies. For the remainder of the loot, most of them should be either low value scarabs or bubblegum currencies. For this, we will be selling them all at once on TFT Discord. But first, we need to go to the TFT bulk selling tool website, which I will link in the description, to generate an advertisement that can be pasted into the Discord channels. The tool is actually quite simple to use. Once you have logged in, simply choose the stash tab where your loot is in, click on the type of loot that you would like to sell, and in this example, we will use currency and input an asking price. To find out what is a good asking price to set, 
we will go to the TFT Discord channel and look at what other people are asking for for loot that is the similar size as ours. Once you have figured out a good asking price, simply click select tab and the tool will calculate how much currency we are asking for for all this loot. Finally, input your in-game name and generate, copy and paste the text and image into the right Discord channel and wait for a buyer to contact you in-game. Finally, let's talk about how much I actually made after 40 maps. This is the breakdown of all the loot that I've sold. All of them add up to a respectable 123 divines. 37% of the value comes from scarabs, 34% from currency, including exchanging full stacks of divination cards, and 12% from maps. I also got two All Flames Ember of Manifested Wealth and one Einhaas Memory of Harvest Beast that make up 11% of the total value. After subtracting the cost, I made 76.8 divines of net profit after running 40 maps. To be conservative, I assume I spent 10 minutes per map, so that's 6.6 .6 hours in total. I also spent about an hour figuring out how to liquidate the loot and actually selling them. So if we divide the net profit by the total time spent, I was making at least 10.1 divines of profit per hour. As for whether this strategy is fun to run or not, I personally find the part where I have to pick up more than 100 items after every map quite tedious and boring. But if you like the feeling of blowing up huge packs of monsters at once and enjoy getting some big ticket items once in a while, this can be a very satisfying strategy for you. Not to mention if you happen to get a Divine Orb Devotion while running this strategy, you can get absolutely and stupidly rich with just one map. I hope this information is helpful or interesting for some of you. If this video does well, I will definitely be adding more farming strategies to this series. So if you like content like this, please consider giving it a like and subscribe. Thank you so very much for watching and I will see you in the next one.